One of the tools that will be most helpful to us in analyzing problems in special relativity is the idea of using world lines, or sometimes known as Minkowski diagrams, after uh, Minkowski, a mathematical physicist. We're going to track not only coordinates x, y, and z of a particle, but also the time that a particle is at locations x, y, and z. In other words, we're going to construct a series of events, and events consist of both a location and a time. As a result, our graphs in this formulation of physics are going to be ordered quadruplets, not ordered triplets. They're going to be three coordinates for space and one coordinate for time. Although it's often the case that it's simple enough to consider just two coordinates, x and t, in order to be able to graph our, paper, our results on two-dimensional paper, like the screen that you're looking at right now. Hopefully the complexities of what we're examining are not too interesting in the y and z direction. So let's imagine a slightly more exa sophisticated example. Let's imagine a three-dimensional system, uh, two, two coordinates for spatial dimensions, east and south, or west and north, and one dimension for time. And so we're going to imagine what it looks like to construct a world line of, of an object. Let's imagine that we're making a map in the north, south, east, west directions of the state of Texas. And we're going to imagine that we start out on Monday in the location of the red dot for Austin. Then we're going to want to graph what happens when on Tuesday at a later time, so further up the time axis, we end up in Dallas, the other red dot on the Tuesday picture. And suppose in our little formulation of this history, then we return to Austin back on Wednesday. A simplest possible world line for an, for an object like me might be the, the case where I just stay in Austin all the way through this entire description, Monday through Wednesday. In that case, the world line, the line that describes my history, just would be a vertical line like the one shown. But the other world line, the one that describes my round trip from Austin to Dallas and back to Austin, might look more like the red line here. It's got a kink in it. So world lines describe a, a history of a set of events, in this case, me making a round trip. Let's think a little bit more about world line graphs and how we're going to use them a little bit more quantitatively. In two dimensions, we might just have time on the vertical axis and the spatial dimension x on the horizontal axis. I don't know why, but for some reason it's been convenient and it's been a, a, a standard for everyone to draw the spatial dimension along the horizontal. Even though in first year physics we often think about drawing x versus t. So there's no real reason, but usually t is on the vertical axis. In such a graph, then an object staying at rest would just be a vertical line. So I've just graphed here the world line or the trajectory for a particle that starts out at time t equals zero down here. And if it's at rest, then it continues to be at this coordinate x naught at later times. And therefore that, line, that world line has to be a vertical line. A slow moving object would start to move away from its original location along the x-axis, but it would do so slowly. In other words, it would take a lot of time along the vertical direction just to move a little bit of distance along the horizontal direction. So this green line right here might be the world line for a slow moving object. A fast moving object would have a larger deviation from the vertical dotted line because it makes a bigger excursion in the x direction in a shorter amount of time in the t direction. So again because we've drawn a t on the vertical axis this might be a little bit uh, unusual from what you're used to. Sometimes the vertical axis is recast not just to be time, but it's scaled into meters by multiplying by the speed of light c. So it's usually ct on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal. In this case, that helps us define what's the largest deviation from vertical that a, that a world line can go. In fact, that will be 45 degrees, because light travels at the speed of light, c, 
and so therefore the fastest distance in x it can cover is the amount c times t. So nothing can go out beyond 45 degrees away from the vertical in such a world line graph because that would mean it's traveling faster than the speed of light. We'll use these tools quite a bit when we start doing more detailed analyses of multi-particle systems or single particle systems and we're trying to judge trajectories and how fast they are relative to the speed of light.